You know very well, I don't like talking about men of God, but because there is something that is going on in the country, particularly when I talk about the country, I mean Kenya, uh, that has necessitated me to speak something this morning. You know, it is not my hobby to be talking about men of God. But when something comes up that requires us to offer our believed direction, we are forced to. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know why many, most men of God, believe that they are the sole custodians of truth. I don't know why. And that you must submit to their pattern for you to qualify to be teaching the truth. Anything that does not appear to meet their standards is caritic, heretic, and fake. So you are considered false because you don't submit to a particular pattern. In my view, that is an abnormality. It is. Because how can you limit God to your pattern? God is too big to use your brain alone. That's why he created every individual with a separate brain. Because he has a purpose to use for every one of them. Some brains are big, others are small. Not in terms of physical size, but in terms of capacity. I cannot purport that God has been waiting for me to begin doing what he wants. God has been working. Praise God. Some men of God believe that whatever they teach is sound doctrine and whatever every other person teaches is wrong doctrine. And therefore they believe they are the people to provide the pattern. And actually some of them speak with a lot of finality than God. They can pass judgment on you and you will be scared like you, ne you may never go to heaven. I wonder what could have happened if God could have given some of them the keys to heaven. I thank God for giving the key to heaven to his son, Jesus Christ. That anybody that believes in Jesus can get to heaven. Anybody. Some of these men, it will take us time to qualify to their standards. They are too holy and too senior for us to qualify. Praise God. Hallelujah. A few days ago, I had recommended a particular channel to some of my children who are in Nairobi. I recommended to them a channel. I told them, every man of God has been called and given their own revelation. But uh, for me, I can recommend this channel and this channel and this channel as I always do to many of you. When you keep maturing, I tell you, at your level, you can now listen to Johnson Suleiman. At your level, you can uh, listen to uh, Joshua Sermon. At your level, because every revelation is gradual. As you keep growing, God keeps depositing some level of material. God has both food for infants and for mature people. So there's a particular journal I had recommended some of my daughters and sons in Nairobi. And, and coincidentally, I had also recommended that they go to attend the meetings that were in Nairobi. The, the Rema Festival. There was a meeting that was conducted again at Nyayo. And I also recommended to them to attend another meeting, which is coming probably uh, this coming week. Yeah, for the wife to prophet Ibi Joshua. She's coming to Nairobi for the first time. While the man of God was alive, he never had an opportunity to come to Kenya. 
But by God's special grace, his wife is coming. His wife is coming. So I recommended that meeting to many of my sons and daughters in Nairobi. Offer 200 of them. I told them, please, that's another meeting you can attend. Now, when they were watching that channel, they saw a man of God saying, there is a meeting coming to Kasaran. It is not of God. That's how the man of God, so they were calling me, man of God, you recommended us to watch this man. You have told us to attend the meeting at Kasaran. But the man of God has said, the meeting which is coming, it is not of God. No, I just asked them a simple question. What did I tell you? I told you to attend. What has he told you? He has told you the meeting is not from God. So, when I told you, did I know it was from God? What makes a meeting a meeting of God? Is the presence of Jesus. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. A kingdom cannot support a different kingdom, understand? Jesus cannot support the devil. And the devil cannot be to be supporting Jesus. I know a lot about those things, but the truth remains that the meeting that is upcoming in Kasarani, according to my prayer and the conviction I received, is of God. It's of God. You know, let me, let me tell you something. There's a reason why I'm speaking this. I only recommend something after prayer. And if I pray and God never says anything, I don't create one to appear relevant. I don't. I can give my opinion being a theologian, but I should never equalize my personal opinion with God's opinion. There is my view, what we call in theology, anthropomorphic view. There is my view. But that my view, I sometimes can agree with God's view, but sometimes it can be purely human opinion. Praise God. Hallelujah. I may not want to talk about any man of God. You know, I have come a wrong way. <laughs> I have come a wrong way. And uh, there is a time. You saw me posting photos where I have taken photos with uh, Apostle Nganga. I have taken photos with Bishop Puismuiro. I have taken photos with men of God who wear, who wear this thing. And to some men of God, because I don't wear those things, I am fake. You can only be true and original <laughs> when you wear this thing. So every time we attend meetings, I see men of God write their statements, please come well dressed. But when you see me take photos with people of that nature, you must agree with me that revelation is gradual. Do you know there is a time? You, you know me, I'm a, I'm a former Adventist. Every time people spoke in tongues, anybody here know that those people, we consider them demonic, lost, and on their way to hell. That is why I do, I'm not quick to speak. Like men of God are quick to speak. This is a cult. This is of the devil. If you knew how some of us have walked this journey for the last 25 years, to agree to greet a Catholic priest with my hand, it is a divine calling. Yeah. We have come a long way. Now to the road. Hallelujah. We have come a long way. To be seated with Bishop Mark Karaoke. 
Do you know there are days when Bishop Bruce Muiru could preach Kunanuru Gizan and you arrive home, you discover people have put their radio, the same program. You take the radio and you bury it. You could ask them questions in the, in, at home. Why are you entertaining the devil in this house? Because in those days, Bishop Moiro was a devil. Apostle Nganga was a devil. If you could sit on TV, Apostle Nganga, and people are rolling. Not, I'm talking about us. But there are people even now. The moment they even see me on TV, they can pursue the TV. They break the TV. There are homes where people are being killed because of listening to me. When I'm on radio, there are people who switch off. It is not because I am a bad man or they are bad people. It's because children and adults are different. It's a question of growth. When you see somebody saying this one is of the devil, this one is, is of God, it is not necessarily that they have received the revelation. It is a question of growth. Don't judge them. Give them time. They will come to realize that. I remember in 2001, I was almost hit with a, a motorcycle. Because as I was walking in Kampara, 2001, I was walking in Kampara, I came across a meeting where the man of God, Pastor Kayanja, was conducting a miracle service somewhere in Kampara. And then as I was walking, I came across Pastor Kayanja. And I said, oh my God, I've just been recruited into the devil, devil worshiping. And as I was running, not to be recruited, I was almost hit. It is after 20 years that the spirit of God, I received the spirit. And the spirit told me, Kayanja is my son. He is my son. After 20 years, it is when I started now requesting the country of Kenya. And we prayed, I think intercessors remember. We pray that Kayanja can step in Kenya. And he came to Kenya this year. After how many years? 20. But for the last 20 years, I believed he is a man of the devil. 20. Bishop Makarioki, a great man that has changed this country, I believed is of the devil. And I believe even many of you. Even many of you see that here. I know even some of you don't even believe me. You are seated here because there is something smaller you want. You are not 100% sure whether I am of God. <laughs> so that's what you normally say in Kisi. But we must be very careful. As we are seated here, you are very careful. Very careful. I remember those days in 2001 in, in Kampara. The way I was running, and I was not a boy. I was in my second year at university. As, not university to train as a teacher, uh, to train as a pastor. If a pastor can run away from a meeting of another pastor, what do you expect of a young church member? I, I was doing my undergraduate. Let me tell you, a particular level of religion can be very very dangerous and very very bad that's why people need liberty praise God I, I ran away <laughs> and all this I was doing all this I remember a day I was preaching against the Catholic Church and now they are going to hell that was the year 2000 and uh, the, from, from the years 1999, the year 2000, I preached powerfully that the only church which is true is the SDA church. Anybody else is wasting their time. They are market timing and soon they will be at uh, their home in hell. And therefore, even until now, there are many churches that believe that the rest of us are headed nowhere. They are the only ones that are going somewhere. Can you believe? As you have been hearing the voice of God. Seeing visions. Seeing miracles. Walking with the Lord. Fire dropping on the mountain. Before your own eyes. That all those evidences. Do not mean anything to some people. They don't.
not mean anything. They still believe you are headed to hell. I I don't know why it for the church it is so easy to see people going to hell than going than seeing them going to heaven. The church is so quick to see you go to hell than seeing you go to heaven. When actually heaven has been made simple is accepting Jesus. And there you are. Going to hell is now complicated. It was easier before the cross. Because you had no choice. You had nothing to choose. But now going to heaven is easier than going to hell. Because you have a choice. Something has been done. Jesus has come. He has died. He has risen. The only thing you require to do is to accept him. People that lived before Jesus had a complicated way to operate. But for us, it is easier to go to heaven than it is to go to hell. You have a person to choose. The other day I was watching another man of God who believes that every other man of God, every other man of God is false except himself. Himself. Nobody else hears from God except him. If God has not spoken to him, it is because God is silent. So the only time God speaks is when he speaks to him. Any other man that says God has spoken, it is not true. So I, I saw him listing a number of false preachers. Penhin, false. Arsoninganga, the bishop, the man of faith. Hey, the devil is a liar. Bishop Arsoninganga, fake and false. Apostle Kimani on his way to hell. <laughs> Maybe he has not known me. I could be on the list. Everyone else is warning everybody else. Every man of God in Kenya is false. And I think this is the philosophy that was with the El Elijah, the prophet. He, thought, he went even before God and he went convincing God. You know, I am the only one left. As if he's the one that was calling people for God. <laughs> he was telling God, you know, these people have killed all the prophets. You, God, you are not aware. I am the only one surviving. Then God told him, no, I have 400 more. Four, not four. Say 400. So when Elijah was looking around, he could not see anybody. He could not see himself. What a false conviction. How do, you think God, is, God has not been doing anything. He's waiting for you from Eldoret to come to Kisi. You save people for him. You leave Kisi. You go to Keroka. You save people for him. You leave Keroka. You go to Nairobi. You think God does not have people in Nairobi? You think God doesn't have people in Kisi? You think God does not have more people in Eldoret? You think God does not have people in Mombasa? You think God doesn't have people in Dar es Salaam? My friend, God has 400 more. You are not alone. He has many people that are doing it. Another time the disciples of Jesus came and they told him, we have seen other people. That are doing the things we do in the manner in which we do them. Jesus told them they are part of us. Let me tell you, man of God, wherever you are, we are many. <laughs> we are very many that are doing the right thing. God does not consult any human being on who to call. You can be my spiritual father, but God cannot consult you to call me. Otherwise, he could have produced all your biological children to become the man of God you want to produce. You don't dictate God. He can put people under you, but they are fully under him. You don't confine them to a pattern. God can reveal himself to them according to the circumstances of their functionality and operation. Oh, Apostle Onganga is false. Oh, uh, uh, Ben Hin is false. Oh, Kimani. 
Oh, I don't know who. Everyone is false. You, who? They are not listening to me. So if we don't listen to you, we are false. And we are going to hell. Anyway, even if, even if these other people are, are wrong. For example, me, I'm a theologian. I've gone to class, and after class, I have, um, I have enough degrees of what I do. But again, I submitted to the degree of Christ. Because I had all these degrees, but I never had the Holy Spirit. It is until one time I, I accepted to fast for a longer period. And God in his grace and mercy gave me the Holy Spirit. From that time, my perspective changed. I began seeing things differently. But let me say, for example, my wife preaches with me. Do you expect my wife to become a theologian? My wife is a medic. She shares in the grace. She doesn't say the knowledge. She's learning the knowledge from me. But she's, she has a share of grace. She can minister. She has a package of the anointing. But you don't expect her to explain hermeneutics. You don't expect her to explain homiletics. You don't expect my wife to, to begin explaining the principles of theology. I mean, to give the context and to make an excuses. Unless she decides to go to class on the same. But that does not mean that God cannot use her. God uses people according to their level of knowledge. In Acts chapter 18 and verse 25, a man called Apollos, God used him on his strength. He was eloquent. But the Bible says he had a deficit of knowledge. He only knew the baptism of John. That's a deficit of knowledge. God is not waiting for you to know everything. For him to use you. He's waiting for you to use what he has given you already. To advance his kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot know all that I know. But what you know is still useful to the master. How can you kill a kid in a jaw? Ile on a jaw to me a yo. Go to go for a mungo. Apollos did not know the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but that did not stop God from using him. God was still using him. Actually, as a matter of fact, he made more disciples who had limit limitation of knowledge like he did. He knew the way of the Lord, but he did not know the baptism of the Spirit. Did that one prevent God from using him? No. God was using him. And he was taking him from one city to another. With that deficit of knowledge. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Most men of God differ on the premise of knowledge. Everyone wants to be superior. You want to have people under you. Peter and Paul differed. Not because they were not called by the same God. They were called by the same God. Serving in the same locality. Having similar disciples with the same agenda. But not agreeing in terms of revelation. It took Peter many years to establish that Paul was a man of God. But all the days he believed he was the killer they knew. But when you read Peter's confession in his own book, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, he's telling the people that our brother Paul has a higher revelation and a great wisdom. So if you don't understand his, his writings, you can bring judgment to yourself. It's a confession after he too has matured over a period of time. Because he believed that the Gentiles were not supposed to be saved. For them to, to be saved, they required to go through the ritual of physical circumcision. But Paul, owing to the higher revelation, he believed that people can be saved without necessarily going through physical circumcision. Paul knew about circumcision. And Peter knew about circumcision. 
But Peter knew about circumcision of the foreskin, whereas Paul knew about the circumcision of the heart. Both of them knew about circumcision, but one at a higher level circumcision, another one as a Jewish ritualistic circumcision. And the one who believed that people must be cut their foreskin said this other man is fake. It took him several years to make this kind of confession that he makes in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Some of these people we think that they are caritic and they are heretic and that they are moving to hell. They are actually people that are operating under higher grace and higher revelation. That's the truth. In most cases, the reason why Jesus had a problem with the Jews is not because he was false, but because he was doing things which they did not have understanding. They did not know why the things he was doing. And the Bible says they wanted to kill him because he called God his father and because he broke the Sabbath. That on the Sabbath he was healing people. And he was calling God his father. Now, as you are seated here. Are you not aware that Jesus is the son of God? Now, if you are a son of somebody. What is the problem of calling that somebody your father? I just want to say to the man of God. If we have a young person. Like in the image of the wife of a prophet. You know wives of prophets suffer a lot. You know there was a wife of a prophet that was supposed to be auctioned in the Bible. The husband died. It, it is not new for a prophet to die. And it's not new for a prophet to die and leave his wife behind. This is not something new. A prophet can die, leave his wife and children behind. A prophet died and he left a wife and his children behind. And a day came when they were being auctioned. And they were being auctioned not by witches, but by religious people. Until comes a man of God who had a share of grace by the name of Elisha. He did a miracle to rescue this woman. Please, in all fairness, if we believe somebody is teaching something wrong, even if the Bible says we rebuke, must we make it public or there is a better way of doing it? Can't we do it in love? Can't we do it in love? Yes. When Priscilla and Aquila learned that Apollos did not know the baptism of the spirit, they never shouted. They kept quiet. They waited for him. After he finished his service, they requested him to accompany them to their home. When they went to their home, the Bible says they now explained the way of the Lord more adequately. If you think I am wrong, which is the best way to tell me? To go to the social media and say, Pastor Morabe is wrong? I, I also have people I believe they are wrong. But when you see them teach their wrong things, they teach them with a lot of conviction and finality. So the easiest thing is not to attack them, but to find a way of explaining what I do believe is correct. And this which is correct may be wrong to another person whose revelation is higher. We must reach a point as believers to understand that revelations differ based on maturity. God cannot reveal to you more than you can contain at that particular time. I just want to say this. As brothers who wish to rebuke, I think we can do it in love. We can do it in a more civilized manner. We can do it in a more better way. Rather than shouting all over and calling people's names, Considering them that they are fake. You may think like those who people who consider, who consider Prophet T.B. Joshua to be fake. I, have, I never had an opportunity to see him personally or to meet with him. But in the spirit, 
God referred to me before I established this church. He referred to me about this man. We were watching Emmanuel TV. And my wife asked me a question when I was still preaching in a religious church. She asked me a very simple question. Do you also call yourself a pastor? Because she was watching TV Joshua and she asked, she asked me a question. Is this man also a man of God? I answered yes. Are these things that he does true? I told my wife, whatever he is doing is true. Because Jesus said, the things I do, you, will, you also will do. And even greater than this, shall you do. I, I told my wife, this man T.B. Joshua, I don't know him, but my heart has no problem with whatever he does. He is solving people's problems seriously by the might hand of God. You can never know me by watching. It is the spirit to tell you who I am. <laughs> Many of you, when you came here, what you had had and what you have now experienced are two different things. You, you stayed in your home for over a year because you were told that this Illuminati is a man of the devil. He is the, the, the champion of womanizers. He is the number one. He sells drugs. He does everything. Those are all things which are bound to happen and to be said. But the reality can only come through you hearing from God. Because if I am sent of God, anybody sent of God or hearing God can know who I am. I too can know who you are. As a matter of fact, even these pastors that I've been watching, talking that the other pastors are fake. They themselves are not fake. They are not fake. This prophet is saying, oh, Kimani is fake. Oh, this one is fake. They are not fake, but they are doing a different assignment. I can connect my car and it can move, but that does not qualify me to be a mechanic. So these men of God, they are true. Maybe my calling could be, let them establish their calling. Let them establish. Otherwise, you'll be talking about very irrelevant things. And you will always be thinking like, Elijah, you are alone. Alone. Out of all these periods on earth, you are alone. It is only one time when God allowed one person to stand in for the rest on the cross. From that time, we are periods. From that time. We are many. To, to come and say you are the custodian of truth. How? 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 How, how, how are you the custodian of truth? So the rest of us must learn from you. We don't need Jesus. We need you. Once you are around, even if Jesus doesn't show up, you are enough. <laughs> my, my, my honest appeal to this man of God, this is very honest, please. Jesus is too big to be localized in your area alone. He is too big to reveal all of himself to you alone. You cannot be the center of all truth. No. Truth is distributed according to how it determines. He came with the truth and the grace and he apportioned to everybody according to his own design. You cannot dictate him on how much he should give to me and how much he should give to you. But consider according to uh, consider yourself according to the portion you have been given. Let every man measure himself according to uh, Romans 12 verse 2 and 3. Measure yourself according to the quantity that you are given. According to the quantities you are given. And if there is a problem, let this man of God talk to, uh, to others in a bright way. 